What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. Today it's a big day on the homestead. Big day. Big day. Our chicken tractor behind us is finally finished. $5,000 later. Finally finished. <laughs> Not quite $5,000. More than I probably uh, what? wanted to spend on it. But yeah, it's just bit. like I wanted it. Just perfect. What's funny is right this was probably a week or so ago it's not funny right <laughs> as i was about to be finished with it i had a company email me wanting us to be an influencer or have an affiliate relationship yeah. with them they were going to send me a free chicken pen okay. but i would have had to assemble that and it was a nice one but it wasn't quite exactly uh <laughs> what i built right here um, so we have this now while we're filming. Wait, hold on. You missed part of the story. It's 9.30 at night, and I am out there slowly painting on this polyurethane, and then you tell me that. You're like, oh, funny story. Yeah. It's like, oh, that is funny. <laughs> it, it wasn't It was going to be near as well built as this one right oh, here is. Oh, my goodness. And um, <laughs> All right. while we're filming this, they're tearing down an old barn across the street over there, so if yeah. you hear a bunch of destruction of the excavator over there. That's what it is. That's what that noise is. So. Okay um we got it out here by the garden plot brooklyn's uncle just brought over a hand truck and we rolled it from the barn out here so we're ready to put it in the plot i want to show you all the kind of features of it show you all the nooks and crannies of it then we'll slide it into this pea plot right here put our chickens in there yeah and uh let them forage away now this pea plot did it remake this piece because they're i we picked that clean yeah, yeah, it's ago. still making a good bit of peas. Okay. Now, and when you see us put them in this pea plot, there are still peas out there that can be picked. But the last time we picked them, they were stung. Some of them were stung pretty good. It was a little disappointing. So we did save some pods for seed, but we're not going to pick any more peas mm -hmm. off here. We did put up about four or five quarts, enough to give this variety a good try. But we have plenty of peas in the freezer, and they're getting stung right. pretty bad just because it's a rough time of year for pest pressure. Yeah. So we're going to let the chickens enjoy them. And one more thing, this isn't our first time with a chicken tractor in the garden. This is take two for Lazy Dog Fam doing this. <laughs> first time we've done it in about three years. Mm -hmm. well, the previous chicken tractor I had was super, super heavy. Right. I could barely move it. Like a big rectangle. Yeah, this one's a lot lighter. And I'm going to tell you about something a little later that's going to make it even easier to move than it already is. So okay. Let's take a look at it. Good deal. Okay, so this A-frame tile chicken pen chicken tractor is eight foot long six foot wide and i had looked online i can't remember the website but i saw a design i liked i'd been wanting to build an a-frame i wanted to build it out of two by twos instead of two by fours because i wanted to be a lot lighter put a lot of extra bracing in there and it seems pretty dang sturdy so let's walk around here and so we've got because it gets real hot down here in the south We've got plywood on this side and on that side to give them plenty of shade in there so they can get out of the heat. Then we use hardware cloth instead of chicken wire. It's a lot more sturdy. Somebody made a good point that snakes and stuff can't get in through this. So that's nice. The bottom, there really is no bottom. It just sits right on the ground so they can forage and eat whatever we sit them on, grass or in the garden or whatever. And I'm not really worried about stuff getting up underneath here. It sits pretty flush on the bottom. So I'm not really worried about that. Let me show you my door here. So my door worked out pretty good. It fits snug, but I want it to fit snug. So we got a little latch on it right there. Pull that off. We can open the door up there. Now we aren't getting in here. Uh, I'm not getting in there. <laughs> yeah. Right around this corner here, can you show them? Yeah. We've got our feeder hanging. I just used the eye hook in the top there and got this little bungee cord so I can easily move that in and out and i did that right there so it would stay dry the food would stay dry we'll leave our water pail on the ground right here uh, i'm not worried about it staying dry so my door here worked out really well it was a little tough cutting some of these angles right here because this thing's on a slope but uh, just had to take my time got it in there got it hinged good and everything so really happy with the door there got that we may end up having to put a lock on the door because the boys <laughs> well i don't know if they can flip that latch oh, okay it's okay. pretty tight right here you can see the ramp that walks up into the nesting area up there here are the handles to move this thing so i got eye hooks down in there pretty far apart we've got a rope and then i just got a piece of um 
plumbing hose here that's flexible because this is a lot easier to hold than a rope burn in your hands. So that works pretty good there. We'll come around to this side. Oh, let me show them this right here. So I wanted to put some metal flashing up here just to kind of keep water off the top. Now this looks kind of crappy because this thing flipped all over the place when I was hauling it home in my truck. So it's not the prettiest, but it's functional and it'll work. We put the, uh, the screws in here with a rubber washer on it to seal that off good. We've got a bit of a mosaic pattern on our plywood here <laughs> just because um, I had to cut some of these pieces so I didn't have to get a whole new big piece of plywood. So just kind of had to work with what we got. But we've got a bazillion screws in here. This thing is super, super sturdy. Here's where we'll get the eggs when that time comes. So we've got a latch right here. I've got that pretty tight. We can fold that down. We've got a handle here. And we'll look right in there. There's our nice little nesting area. Got some shavings in there. So we can close that, reach in there, grab the eggs. Even with my arms, yeah. I can reach in there pretty good. So that will stay tight. We'll have to have a little talk with the boys. Although I don't think they can reach this up here. So we shouldn't have to worry about them opening that up. Over here on this side, I can easily clean out my nesting box. So I left a little room here. We can pull that out of there, dump that out, probably dump it in the garden, clean it out, slide it back in there. Sometimes it doesn't want to go over the top of this here. There we go. So we can access it from several different ways. But just enough room there. I'm not really worried about anything crawling in those little nooks and crannies and that's where I can kind of grab this and pull it out. This is meant for some model of rabbit pen online. I found it on Amazon and kind of built everything around this here so we got plenty of shade in there for the guys or for the girls and um nothing could get in there as far as i can see it's pretty secure and it's a little heavier just a hair heavier than i want it to be but not too heavy we can pick it up and move it and when we're moving this thing we're not going to be moving it far what we moved it today from the barn to here it's probably as far as we'll ever move it at one time so we're just going to put this thing in the garden plots and we're just going to move it over, you know, five or six feet at the time, probably every, every few days. So we're not going to be hauling this thing all over the place. We're just kind of bumping it along these plots here to let the chickens eat the cover crop for the peas or whatever's there and also to let them fertilize the garden. Now, down here, so we used a hand truck underneath here and Brooklyn's uncle kind of pulled it and we moved it from the barn to here pretty easily. But I spoke with a company actually earlier today called Chick Lifts, and they make this neat little thing that would install right here. It bolts into the wood, and you just basically press your foot down on it, and it lifts it up. It's got two rubber wheels. It lifts it up just barely off the ground, and then I could pull this thing anywhere around here a long distance if I wanted to. And then you put your foot on it again and it sets it back down on the ground. So it's like a mini hand truck. <clears throat> yeah, like a little in. mini hand truck, but so much easier. But it bolts to the frame here. And we'll be glad to show you guys that when we get that and install it, hopefully in a few weeks. And that would just be for long distance transport. But this with this system right here, it's not that heavy. Me and Brooklyn can pick it up and just scoot it along the garden plots. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scoot this thing over into this garden plot of purple hole peas here where we want it, at least for the first few days. Show you how we do it. Right. Okay, I was actually pretty nervous about lifting that up. Was it too heavy? Was it, it wasn't too heavy. I thought I believe every it's time... gotten lighter since yesterday's like the wood. I'm gonna dry it out a little bit, oh, maybe. I have no idea. But um, the first time I helped him lift it, we were lifting it off those saw horses, and I was like, oh, you better throw this thing out. <laughs> the, the little rope thing on the end makes it uh. Yes, it is so much better with that plastic plumbing piece, because our old one, you didn't have that. It just had rope. And you about tear your hands up. So, so all right, let's go get this little baby chicken. Let's go get them. So these guys are ready. 
to get out. <laughs> Brooklyn's already took their feed and water out, but they got with these just knocking over all the time. Eating more food than we can keep in that thing right there. I call them baby chickies. They are not babies. These are um these are full grown chickies. Oh, not full grown. They're I ain't getting, well, not full grown, but they're some big. They're not my little tiny babies I came home with. No, they they ready. They ready for a bigger spot. They ready to eat some peas. Um, little Rio. I hope he gets cuter. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the Australort, is that what you're calling? Yeah, the Australort. He is a little feisty little booger. I don't understand his demeanor. He's always I can't remember. Spazzing. I can't remember all the names. Bubby has them all. Oh, now. I know. That's Rio, Eagle, Ruby, Pikachu. Oh wait, no. I messed it up. You're right. Bubby's gonna have to tell you. Yeah. Okay, we'll sorry. On, Bubby. He can tell we'll us all the names. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna take this whole thing so we're not carrying these. By hand, we're going to take it, throw it in the back of the mule there, and drive them over there to their new spot. Toss it gently in the back of the mule. Oh, we're I said throw. throw. Yeah, we're not going to yeah. throw. Ease it in there. Ease it in there. They're ready. Oh, yeah. Y'all about to go on a ride. I'm going to go to get one of them. So I got their watering thing here. I really like these galvanized waters as opposed to the plastic ones. I really like the galvanized feeders too, but I couldn't find one at Track Supply. I like the ones that hang up against the board or something. And if some reason this one doesn't work out or they climb all over it, the plastic feeder I've got, I may end up buying one of those online or something. But I like these galvanized feeders. Now we're gonna set this on the ground. We're not hanging it, it's a little heavy. I figured it might stress the wood a little too much if we hung it. So we're just gonna put this on the ground in here. Grab our feeder here. All right, we'll hang that back in here. Just like that. And now Miss Brooklyn's ready to grab some chickens. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't spaz out. Sometimes <laughs> birds make her a little nervous. Oh, there's an 85% chance there's gonna be some spazzing. One at a time, just get whichever one you can. Well, you got, I mean, how are we gonna make sure this stunt come back? Just reach your hand underneath it. I gotta get it open enough so I can get my hand in there. Don't let them out. Oh, Stella. Get Stella. Out, Stella. One chicken going in. Okay, now scoot away from the door. Oh, oh, he thinks he's bad now. <laughs> Stella, it's okay. It's probably not good to have a duck retriever out here while we're putting chickens in. Number two. Come here. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Don't worry, I can do this. You got this. That's what I keep telling myself. You got this. You fear birds. I don't like how he's doing with his hand. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. Here, you hold the camera. I'll get Bluey. Don't act like that was so easy. It was. He tried to peck you, I know he did. No, he did. He tried to peck me. Stella, get back. Oh, Dad. Jeez. Where'd the other chicken go? Oh. Leave Bluey for me. That's Ruby. That's Ruby? Yeah. It doesn't look anything like a Ruby. Well, that she That's used to be, I don't know, a little different color. Okay. No, no, leave blue for me. Okay. That's the one. I told you, he's fussy. That's Rio, he's very fussy. He's fussy, fussy chicken. Don't throw him though, be gentle. Oh. Oh, I got some, got some chicken. <laughs> That's Pikachu. See Pikachu tried to peck you. Pikachu gonna try to take a Pikachu. Okay. Okay. Come back, Stella. Stella. <laughs> She's so sweet. She's wondering where all her friends went. Oh. Okay. Eat y'all right. Eat y'all right. 
she sweet bluey. Why she a sweet girl? Yeah. Yeah, watch her pick me now. Still back. Good girl. See, she's so docile. Yeah, that's a sapphire. Mm-hmm. That that little Australorp, Lorp, however you say it, Rio, I told you, he's crazy. She's crazy. I hear Ty Ty crying. You better go get him. Uh -oh. okay. There they are. Got plenty of room now. Plenty to eat. Ty Ty, did you get a good nap? Oh, not oh, good enough. No. Look, Ty Ty. Look at all the them in there. They don't know what to do with all that space. Do they? <laughs> Look at those sweet chickies. I wonder if they'll figure out how to use the ramp. How they'll know how to do it. They'll figure it out. They'll figure out how to climb up there. Y'all need to be eating them peas in there now. <laughs> they're a little weary. I can't believe they're still sticking together. I figured they would just... Mm -mm. But I guess they've been together so long. It's going to take them a minute to figure out this new area. So here's... I'll zoom out here. Here's this pea plot here. This is 30 by 35, like all these plots, these six plots out here. So what we'll do is, once they tromp that down a few days, chew on that a few days, we'll just scoot it over this way, five or six feet, let them chew on that, keep scooting it over. And then when we get to the end here, we'll move it, move it up and go back around until we kind of cover the whole plot there. We'll just keep moving it and these peas right here are pretty resilient they can take some foraging so it's not like they'll kill them completely and maybe by the time we move it back around the forage will have recovered and they can just keep eating on these guys or at least that's the plan here and then whenever we get ready to plant something else here we we'll plant some fall crops here we'll mow it down and we'll uh, till that chicken manure into the soil give it a few weeks and um and then be ready to plant. It's gonna be a little different game in our no-till plot if we put them over there, because we can't till that one. So we'll probably put the chickens on there before we're adding another layer of compost and just layer compost on top of all that and then let it rest a little while before we put them on there. But this is the plan. We'll cover crop, let the chickens enjoy the cover crop and we'll enjoy the fertilizer from the chickens. So that actually went a lot quicker and a lot easier than I expected. Miss really? Miss uh, Farm Girl here, chicken out a little listen, bit. Whatever. You just can't do it? I can't do it. I, I like talked myself up. I had this real internal monologue. I was like, Brooklyn, you can do it. It is not going to hurt you if they peck you. Still freaks me out. I mean, before we got here, I tried to put this boot on and there was a bullfrog on it and I screamed. In my boot, there was a bullfrog. Yeah. Came, I mean, I'm just not up for... What, the pecking? Yes, God, just, oh. I think it's the thing with birds. You just have a thing with <gasps> birds. It's all birds. It's how quick they're... <laughs> this is our you got to be faster than the birds. <laughs> I'm not. I'm too hesitant. I'm like... Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> the, it's taken them a minute to realize that the peas are good stuff to eat. They're eating some <laughs> weeds in there. I'm hoping these chickens like purslin because there's plenty of purslin <laughs> They're tearing in there. it up. Uh, now let's go inside. We want to show you our popcorn. It's finally popping well. Oh, it's and Brooklyn's so been good. trying it. So, so good. Uh, I don't have my popcorn, or excuse me, my corn shell are finished yet oh, or set up we gotta yet. We got to get that done. Uh, they've been doing it by hand. I want to go show you some of this delicious <laughs> popcorn. All right, we are ready to pop some popcorn. This is some that Titus and I shelled a few days ago, and I just want to put it in this plastic bag. We talked about this little popper before. It's off Amazon. I think it was $15. Super easy. I think I looked the other day. They might have went up to $17. Oh, okay. But we'll Still put a, a link below to that. Okay. Of course, you can pop it on the stove or however you normally pop it. But this is just easier for us. So I'm going to put these in here. Oops. I never measure it. I just put enough. How much is enough? Quarter cup, maybe? May I don't even know if that be that much. I'd say maybe a half a cup. Maybe a fourth a cup. I have no idea. I should measure it. I okay. Do. There, the boys have lost it, but there's a little bitty um, clear top that goes on it like this to melt your butter, and I think it's the measuring cup for it. So it should come with a measuring cup. Uh, we're just missing a piece. We're just missing a piece. The boys have taken so it. So top here, you've got coconut oil and Mi butter. Right. You can just use the coconut oil, but Aram likes it with the butter in it. 
So that's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. All right, so then I just put it on. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. I probably could have put more in there. I don't, I guess I should read the manual to see what the max amount is. That looks like a good little serving. I could probably eat all that. Yeah. So this normally melts all your butter really well. Probably with it being in there where the coconut oil didn't get it as much. So then I just drizzle this on here. Abram always says I never get it buttery enough, so. He's used to the movie theater. <laughs> He's used to that movie theater popcorn. <laughs> and then you just add some salt. And wah wah. So good. I didn't add this all yet. Mm. That stuff is delicious. This is, it tastes different than regular kernel corn. I mean, like regular popcorn that you buy. Not in a bad way, just a little bit in a texture way, but it tastes so much better to me. Maybe it's because I grew up. <laughs> that is really good. Isn't it good? Really, really good. I feel like if Abram was going to sell this at his vegetable stand, <laughs> Then we need to have um, some popped. We need to have some pop. Mm -hmm. We just be popping some because. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, I need to that. People sample this. Be like, oh, I gotta sample. have a bag. Yeah, of that. yeah. It's like if you're selling boiled peanuts, you let people try oh. one, or mm -hmm. selling watermelons, yeah. you cut one open. I get it. Or whatever. I get it. But this uh, this little dash unit right here. It's the ticket, y'all. If you grow your own popcorn, or if you buy popcorn in bulk, that's the best seventeen dollars you ever spent yeah. right there. Because I don't have to clean a pan now. I mean, I may be supposed to clean this, but I don't think so because there's no butt. There's nothing in it. It's just mm -hmm. hot. I was worried about this. So the last video where we popped some, we mentioned it was kind of hard and tastes like caramel corn. <laughs> <laughs> some people commented and said there's two types. There's a mushroom popcorn and a butterfly popcorn. Mm. Guessing this looks more like a butterfly than it does yeah. a mushroom. Yeah. At uh, first it looked like a... I know what they're talking about because I've gotten that corn before and it all just looks like a circle and I'm like, whoa, what is this weird stuff? Anyway, this is really good, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got plenty to enjoy. Oh, can't wait. Hopefully, we get the sheller mounted soon. We can show you yeah. guys that. That's going to be a cool way to do it. We'll get it all shelled, and then we'll keep it dry. We'll bag some up, give some away, Christmas gifts, whatever. Oh, but Abram I thought of that. Mm -hmm. Abram's really excited about selling it. You know he's always trying to make a dollar. That's right. So, he's excited about that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, getting the mm -hmm. chicken pen set up. We'll have lots of awesome content coming in the future, moving that thing around, utilizing that mm -hmm. in our gardens. And then hope you enjoyed seeing how the popcorn pops there. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Hi, uh -oh. Grumpy Baby. See you guys. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life